week ago, these five models looked like this. Now, they look like this. Here's the story of how I applied the finishing touches to this unfinished project and rebuilt some of an old childhood collection. Christmas, 1995. All I wanted from Father Christmas was Warhammer, Warhammer, Warhammer. My haul included the second edition box set, a Blood Angels tactical squad, and a Lehman Russ battle tank. Clearly, I had been a good boy that year. As was common, I also received some cash in Christmas cards. And, like the addict I was, I could think of only one place I wanted to spend it, my local games workshop. If the photos in White Dwarf and months of shelf browsing had done anything to me, it was to convince me, beyond any doubt, that I wanted one particular box, a Space Marine Assault Squad. How could I not want them? Just look at them. Finely detailed metal miniatures, loads of weapon options. And if it wasn't inspiring enough to have a set of miniature genetically enhanced killing machines, it was the aforementioned with jump packs. The image was vivid, power armoured monsters soaring across the battlefield, landing on their enemies with the full wrath of the Emperor exacted by the teeth of a chainsword. I needed them. I needed them like I needed oxygen. The box bore the title Ultramarines Assault Squad, although the store manager assured me I could paint them however I liked. Huh. A good thing I had his permission. I collected Blood Angels at the time, and from what I had read about their background, Assault Marines fit the Sons of Sanguinius like a glove. The box contained five metal miniatures, a sergeant with a power fist, and one of each of the Assault Marine sculpts. I liked the one with the bolt pistol holster at the front, like he had slipped there after an awkward landing. Along with these were five metal jump packs that could double as paperweights, and enough plastic arms, pauldrons and weapons for pretty much any loadout you would like. They got the Blood Angels treatment, and as I mentioned in another video, they departed my ownership with the Great Purge of 2010. However, I always felt like I wanted to paint those models like Ultramarines. Maybe it was down to my affinity for the box art. Perhaps it was seeing them on display in my old GW store. Perhaps later on, it was the opening cinematic of the video game Space Marine. But the reason doesn't matter, only the result. Earlier this year I embarked on a quest to find Metal Assault Marines on eBay. I found a couple of good deals. In February, I started painting five of them, one of which was a neat conversion, a pleasant side effect of buying pre-loved miniatures. March arrived, and the squad was unfinished. A week ago, they still looked like this, but they had sat in the wings for too long. So let me share with you the story of how I finished them. A disclaimer first, this is not a tutorial, it's just a montage of clips. Take everything I say with a pinch of salt. First thing to note is, their previous owner had mounted them on solid metal 25mm bases. A smart move. With the weight of each miniature approaching 50 grams, something needed to be done to prevent wobbly model syndrome. I tell you this because, I anticipate some of you will ask where I got them from. I can't answer that question. They came like that from the eBay seller. But if you know where they can be purchased, do let me know down in the comments. And if these were your models once, cheers! In 2nd edition 40k, you could equip your assault marines with a wide variety of melee weapons and pistols. I went semi-boring and chose mainly bolt pistols, 
except one with a plasma. Two have chain swords, two have power swords, and one has a power fist, in case he needs to open a tank in a hurry. As you can see, by this stage I had already done the base coat, highlighting and many details. I painted them in sub-assemblies, to better reach some of these details. I left the jump packs off, so I could apply decals to the shoulder pads. So let's do that first. I have a method for decals. It's not revolutionary, but it is simple, and it is cheap. More importantly, I am satisfied with the results. I can already hear your comments screaming at me. Use microsol and microset. All I will say in response is, I am aware of their existence, and when the opportunity arises, I will try them. But this is my way. I start by brushing on a coat of Ard Coat Gloss Varnish on the area where the decal will be. This gives a smooth surface for the decal. After that has dried, I slide on the wet transfer and pat dry with tissue. For decals on rounded surfaces, I tend to trim and score them, and then play around with the decal on my brush until it sits how I want. When that is dry, I seal the decal in place with another layer of art coat. And finally, I use matte medium to reduce the luster the model has inherited from all that gloss. I use this process for transfers on the pads, knees, and later on the checkers on the jump packs. After the first decal went on each shoulder, I added a 7 numeral to denote squad number, and varnished over that as before. Old heavy metal photos showed more symbols on the tops of the jump pack intakes, but I opted not to copy that. Sometimes, less is more. I noticed the sergeant's face was a little bland, so I used my current favourite flesh recipe. A base of screamer pink, then the raised areas with a mix of screamer pink and a pale flesh colour. For each new layer, I added a bit more of the flesh and a touch of white for the last step. I feel it gives the skin the contrast necessary to make a miniature look decent. For the Mohawk, I used Citadel Avalan Sunset and highlighted with Vallejo Pale Sand. I really love this old sculpt. Dynamic, determined, and more importantly, posed mid-crack grenade slam dunk. With all that done, it was time to glue on the jump packs. I gave them the Calador Sky Blue treatment, highlighting, etc. off camera. You wouldn't thank me for the awkward shots anyway. The metallic areas were painted with Army Painter Gun Metal, and then I used Null Oil and a purple wash to add some depth. I noticed one Marine was lacking a bolt pistol. Here, let me fix that for you, brother. Past Matthew did me a solid hoarding those old sprues. Basing time. Before I painted them, I used some of this grout to cover the gaps where the metal tab is. Grout is an inexpensive filler for projects like these. It's also great for adding texture to bases and for scenery making. I bought this tub three years ago for two quid, and there's plenty of life left in it. For the undercoat, I used wire flesh before painting them army painter goblin green all over. Who will know it's not the 90s citadel paint from three feet away? Well, the internet will now I've posted this video. I found this pot of green flock in my attic. I wanted to try this instead of sand this time. After sticking it down with PVA, I allowed it to dry for a few hours. Then, sealed the flock with dilute PVA. I think the base has turned out okay. And that's it. Five assault marines for a second edition 40k, each weighing more than your grandma's purse. The only problem is, for second edition, they are not game legal. Going by the codexes anyway. Assault squads had to be exactly 10 strong. I guess I will need to do another 5 then. A good job I cornered the market on eBay. Watch this space to see how they turn out. I hope you enjoyed my journey with these. 
If you want to stay up to date with my hobby exploits, then consider following my Instagram as well. And with that, I had better get painting some more miniatures. Take care, and thanks for watching.